guys, so I'm back again. I just thought I'd do a quick video on some of the things that I was asked about on my clinical rotation, uh, just to give you guys a heads up so that you kind of know what things you should be expected to know. Obviously, this is going to vary from maybe state to state, program to program, or also what clinical rotation you're in, because since this was my first clinical rotation, uh, a lot of the questions were probably a little bit more basic than you might hear from you know, someone that's in their last rotation. One thing I was quizzed on a lot was pharmacology. Make sure you can explain the pharmacology in simple terms as well, because although your preceptor knows what you're talking about when you start talking about beta adrenergic uh, agonists and antagonists and receptors and alpha ones and beta ones, they wanna make sure that you can also explain this to a patient, because although I'm sure you're going to have patients that are going to know uh, their pharmacology occasionally. The average person walking on the street, if you tell them, okay, I'm gonna give you, um, I'm gonna give you a medication, it's gonna affect your alpha-1 receptors. They're gonna look at you and go, what? What are you talking about? What does that even mean? So make sure not only do you know the appropriate terminology, make sure you know how to break that down. Because if you can't break down what the medication does in simple terms, you probably need to study it a little bit more anyways. A couple of other things that are important to know are your air to oxygen ratios and how you come up with them because you can certainly memorize the ratios but uh, some people may actually ask you how to calculate it. So if you have it memorized and then they ask you to calculate something and you can't calculate it, that might be a little bit of an issue. Um, that also goes into knowing your alveolar air equation, your AA gradient, and when and why you're going to use all of these equations. Because although um, an experienced respiratory therapist may not need to sit down and do these equations, commonly they want to know that you as a student who is still learning that may not be able to look at a blood gas and tell if there is a uh, probable pulmonary embolism, they want to know that you can take your PF ratio and also you know, do your AA gradient and see what that probability is so that before you get to the same point that they're at, they know you can at least work it out. Some of the uh, equipment that I primarily dealt with were nasal cannulas, high flow nasal cannulas also, so make sure you know how to set up a high flow nasal cannula as well as an aerosol setup because both of those things you may run into depending on where you're at. I think I only ran into an aerosol setup once, but it was good to know how to set it up um, you know, when I was asked. Obviously you want to know your simple mask and your leader flows for each one and why you have those leader flows because if you tell someone for a simple mask that you need at least five, a minimum of five liters per minute and you can't tell them why, that's going to be of course their next question. Well, why does it need to have a minimum of five liters per minute? What are you trying to prevent? Same thing with your partial rebreathers and your non-rebreathers. Know the minimum flows for those and why those are the minimum flows. Of course, you're also gonna to need to know your venti mask. I didn't get asked the specific, uh, okay, for 50%, how many liters is that going to be? Because that's right on your venti mask. On any venti mask you're gonna get, you're, it's gonna tell you how much, what your FiO2 is and what the liters per minute are. You should know how to set up your venti mask. And then something else is probably the order. So if you have a patient that is on a nasal cannula, and they're not satting well, what would you recommend to go to next? And if that particular device does not work, what would you go to next? So that does bring me to the next things. It's probably good to know how to set up a BiPAP and CPAP as well, so make sure you're familiar with some of the common interfaces. Unfortunately, we did not have a version of the BiPAP that we had in my school lab, so it was really nice to see a different version though, and most people do understand that. Um, you know, you may not have all the same exact equipment in the lab, but if you've used one, you can kind of figure out the others just by looking at them. So as long as you know what types of alarms you should be setting and what measurements you might be changing, just make sure you're up to date on all of that as well. I have not taken my critical care classes yet, I'll actually be taking those this semester. So although I had seen some of the things that would be used in critical care, like in an intubation box and in a crash cart, um, if you have not seen what is included in an intubation box and in a crash cart yet before you go out to your clinical, I would recommend just doing some quick research 
and seeing everything that's included. Make sure you know the difference between uh, the various laryngoscopes, know where you would find the ET tube size, know the various things you need to check for before an intubation would be, like checking the light on the laryngoscope. You want to make sure that your cuff is able to be inflated, make sure that you know what a stylet is, all of these things. So most likely you'll see them all before you go out, but just take a couple extra minutes to know exactly everything that goes in that box, how it's set up, and not just how it's set up, but the things you should check before you hand to a physician is just another good thing to know. Obviously I wasn't expected to do any of that on my first rotation, but I was able to sit in on intubations as well as handing equipment over to the physician. So had I not known the difference between a Mac and a Miller when the physician asked for a Mac, I might have been a little bit confused. Um, so make sure that you know those differences, and by the way, Mac has a C at the end, so that's going to be your blade that's curved, and Miller, you can remember by an L because it's the straight blade. Definitely research your hospital also. For example, if your first rotation is at a long-term care facility and you have not gone over trait care in any of your classes yet, just take a couple of minutes to do some research about the various uh, trait types of Hortex versus Shiley and maybe on how to do trait care because that's really going to help you if you go somewhere that has a lot of patients where you'll be watching or assisting in trait care, especially if it's your first rotation, even if you haven't taken those classes yet. Take a couple of minutes to at least watch it and be familiar with some of the material. Alright guys, so I think that's it for now. If you guys have any questions or want to share some of the things that you guys ran into on on your first clinical rotation that maybe you hadn't seen in your classes yet, definitely feel free to leave it down in the comments below. And if you guys do have any other questions, as always, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them and get back to you guys, okay? All right, I will see you later. Hey guys, so I'm back again. Uh, I just thought I would do, um, you wanna make sure that your, uh, your, your, 